Dennis is a good man. Now I'm sure if he says you need a new, uh, what was it again? A, a thermostat. For the that's right, thing. that's right. Yeah, if uh, Dennis says you need a new thermostat, then that's what you need. I'm just glad he had the part on hand. Wouldn't want this to turn into a whole Doc Hollywood scenario. You know the movie that's Oh, I know the movie. We own a copy of it on a DVD. It's something we can all enjoy as a family. Oh, jeez. I don't mind him watching sex and violence. Come on, don't look at me like that. I was young once, I liked all sorts of trash. I'm just not comfortable watching it, you know, with him. It hurts a parent's heart to see that. I completely understand. Can I give you some more chicken, Mr. Stone? Please, David is fine, and no, oh, I'm stuffed. I, I can't thank you enough for letting me dine with you, though. I feel like I could eat two whole more chickens. Well, now, before we start talking about whole other chickens, it looks to me like you still got plenty of good meat left on that plate right there. That's just bone and gristle, Daddy. Well, if you don't want it, why don't you go get Booker? Ooh, that'd make a fine meal for him. I don't think Booker's hungry. Oh, oh nonsense! No, 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 dogs no, no, always no. hungry. Back, let's get all these parts of that leftover food on your plate. You go get them. Oh, that'd make a fine meal for him. Well, go on now. Boy, we have a guest, and I'm sure he would love to see Booker just as much as your mother and I. <gasps> Boy, you gonna make me count? One. Two, three, four, five. Kids, am I right? All right, let's get all these parts together. You're going to see it now, Doc Hollywood. You're going to see something on the floor. Okay. All right. Watch close. Watch close. Right. Where's my baby? Where's my baby? Where's my baby? Where's the baby? You're going to see it. Where's the baby? You're going to see it. Oh, look, oh, look, oh, look, you're so scary. because that kid was kind of being a little bitch about the whole thing. I want you to go to this place, Tavis. I'm busy, though. Tavis, this could be Also, I'm surprised. How quickly did what, you... What, the East Hampton thing? We've just been messing with it too much. I know I'm the one who put the retread on it, but yeah, sure, it's done. I thought if we dug into it a little more, we'd turn up a new facet or come out the other side or something, but turns out we already had everything there was to get. So I'm having Cassius put it together as is. It's going up Friday. See, I knew we had everything for that. Sure, sure, look. I did some more digging around the next day before my car was ready, and I am convinced there is something going on in that place, like a in the water type thing. See, I'm already blown on this. My perspective's totally compromised. I just want it to be this certain thing so bad that it would change just by me being near it. So I think you should go in. Yeah? Under the auspices of, uh, uh, see, there's this band, Ricky's Way. Now, officially, you'd be there with the purpose of doing a piece on that. But really, you would be plumbing the town. We could really get at something, like that, uh, Hasidic LSD commune thing. See, that's exactly what I don't want to be doing. David, I don't want to be chasing some vice-like feelings vice? in some town in the middle of nowhere. Vice, no. No. I don't want to go to some town. No, we're, we're positioned to get in on this, so we're obligated even. Look, Vice is done. Vice is a clown. They did so many dispatches from the gathering of the jugglers that they turned into one. <laughs> so now it's just some loosely amalgamated organizations off to the side, operating, breaking what needs to be reported. Look, we could still get in there discreetly, and we know how to, you know, treat it. People can say what they want about me, but I am always respectful and conscientious when something actually turns out to be a thing. Shin and Gale do band pieces, though. 
Why don't you send one of them? We need someone who can see past their nose on this. I'm afraid if I send someone else, someone other than you, they might see something that's not really there. Fabricate things without meaning to. See wishfully. And, and if there is something there, it might be important. As such, it's important to me that it's seen correctly. It actually felt pretty good to be in the field again, chasing a lead after all this time. Where is this place again? Uh, there are like 50 of them. Make sure you go to the right one. You know, by definition, you can't know you're not missing something. Like I said, it was, right? Yeah. Yes, it is. So let's do like we said. OK, let's do like we said. Anybody find something that burned out Honda Civi up at the ridge, they'll think he went there to sleep it off. Hell, he's done that so many times anyway, there's bound to be enough of his dino DNA or whatever in there to back it up. And if, and if he wakes up on his own, if he wakes up, hell, he'll probably think the same thing. At least he won't be able to come in here, trash the gear, or come at you. It doesn't look like he'll be waking up, though. This is so fucked up. <laughs> yeah. But it's what we're working with right now. Grab his legs! And now Lyle will perform right for the coming season. Winds upon the path.
the place Oh, I'm sorry, sir. The, uh, the price tag on these appear to have been tampered with. Um, I, I'm going to have to reprice it, and I'll get it back on the floor tomorrow. It's the store policy. Uh, that was before I worked here. Listen, I'd like to help you, but I can't put you in contact with them. Yeah, I don't expect you to give me their information, but she could get it from mine to them. Oh, that's just that I don't have a way to get a hold of them. From what I hear, they didn't like to use the phone or email. My editor said they were kind of elusive, but... You know, you're not the only one to come in asking about them. Are you from a label, too? A label? Every now and then someone from a record label will come in asking about them, trying to track them down. No, I'm not with a record label. So why are you looking for Ricky's way? Tavis Leslo. I write with Online Magazine out of Chicago. I had an address, we had an appointment set up. And then no one ever showed. And you are? Making into the notes already. A deal you craft. I know online magazine, do you guys still do the print version? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gets written up in the, the paper, in the websites, magazines. No, not for a few years now. General decline on the medium. From an ironically named print magazine to a little of both to just an obviously named website. Yeah, I guess you could say as an organization we've drifted along into the hyper-real. I don't know about that. Uh, so you came all the way from Chicago just for an interview. It's more of a spender tier two with a band kind of thing. Outside acts like these usually write more about the milieu than the music itself. What address did you go to? Here. Uh, this is my address. What? Uh, I think you're looking for the Hammer Boys. They used to live at that address with me briefly. I never put it together before, but I could definitely see them being this band as well. The Hammer Boys? Is that the name of another project? No, it's just a name for them. <laughs> they used to work here. In fact, one of them, Devin, helped me get this job, and now nobody knows where they are. It's kind of mysterious. Any idea what's up? What kind of message does this send to the rest of the world about our town? Delia! It's almost four o'clock. Can you ring up my little things so I can get on home now? Sure, Lyle. Um, why don't you go back to that address at around eight? You can join us for dinner, I'll show you around and tell you what I know. Who knows, maybe you'll find some clues. Okay. Hey, what's up with this place anyway? It's not really like any co-op that I'm familiar with. You're right, it's not a co-op in the usual, or should I say modern, sense of the word. You can say that again, honey. And I'll take that, uh, that cigarette case there, the one with the bust of Capelli on it, please. Yes. Sir. Yes. Tonight, then. Photo shoots on Locust Avenue with bugs and serpents crawling on the face and, and in and out of the eye sockets and the mouth with dark shadows protruding. And everybody thinks it's so great, but it's... Sick! It's sick! It's sick!
Here, Lila, let me help you with her. Thank you. under the same roof. <laughs> you might have just come out and asked. <clears throat> I wasn't trying to. I didn't even know you lived here. For all I know, you could have come from who knows where. Well, I was the next door neighbor. That is, until the place got sold out from under me. That's right. The owner was this old veteran named Earl. He lived in the basement. He used to take his army pension over to Steve's on the corner and sign over the check to put towards his tab. His drinking outpaced his means, though, so he signed over the deed to the house and started chipping away at that, too. It was up in the air for a while what would run out first, the balance on the house or Earl. I guess Tom doesn't care about the veterans. Tom's is actually owned and run by a shithead named Steve. Mm. Anyway, he sold the place, and here I am. And that's about the time my roommates left me in a lurch. I'm guessing this is where the Hammer Boys come in? This was their place, really. They called it the tool shed. I don't really like thinking about them. Their behavior was erratic. I never knew what kind of scene I was going to come home to from one day to the next. How erratic? Did they become violent? They were violent towards objects, themselves sometimes. At first, I thought it was just standard Bush League data bullshit. But after a while, I realized they were farther out than that. How far out? They seemed intent on sculpting their life into a cross between a living work of art and a low-level nightmare. And when it would actually start to come about, they'd vacillate between reveling in it and not really being able to deal. My so-called performance. <laughs> yeah, like um, Linda Montano, but sleazy. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that situation play out before. It usually ends one of two ways. Everything implodes or... Everyone in the band gets a tattoo of the band name and an energy drink sponsorship. Yeah. Uh, I have something else I can show you, though I have no idea what to make of it myself. She's digging into the vaults. <laughs> I found this in the deep freezer downstairs after they left. What, what is that? Part of an animal or something? I'm not sure exactly. My guess is that it's part of some type of larger forest cat or something. Do you see that dewclaw type part right there? Yeah. And then there's this. <laughs> They're... filled with dirt? Yeah, two gloves carefully filled with dirt and set aside. One with the word powers written on it and the other, the letter J. Like I said, I have no idea what to make of this stuff, but it definitely seems significant. <laughs> <laughs> the tool shed, I've heard that name before. I'd only been here a few months when they left. Things had started to get bad, and I was looking for another place to live. I came home one day, and all of their stuff was gone. I never saw them again. They did leave that. Sort of an altar, I guess. Hammers of all types. <laughs> Jason and I happened to be freaking out about our respective housing crises on our front porches, and we realized we could solve each other's problem. See, 
I only got the sense that this is the kind of place where neighbors actually look out for each other. Oh, God, no, we were enemies. <laughs> they made a terrible racket 24 hours a day. You should have seen the front yard when I moved in here. These were people who had no idea how to take care of themselves and no concept of the disruptive force they created. I thought Delia was one of them, but that evening on the porch I realized she was just as mortified by these Hammer Brothers as I was. And how do you figure in? Because it's been with us for a little while. He fell on his head. They're learning how to um, tie into a new look. <laughs> Do you hear that? What? The cicadas? No. Oh, it's coming from in here. <laughs> There's a little man in there. He's saying... <laughs> I can't go to work, I don't care! You have to help me finish the rest! You know, my life wasn't always like this. Neither was mine. I used to live a bubble place, a household like this. Oh? Yeah, it was this middle-aged woman and an older man. I always assumed they were a couple because why else would they be living together? But then I get to know them a little bit and I come to find out they're just roommates out of necessity. They don't even like each other. They're just two people who didn't have anyone in their lives important enough to live with and who didn't have enough money to live alone. I was 18 then. I lived with people based on how fun they were or whether I was sleeping with them or not. I was young and beautiful and had endless opportunities. I never gave a thought to how I treated people because they always seemed to be on unlimited supply. When did the landscape start to shift to a place of dwindling options? You know, if I spell out the chain of events that begins with me getting out of here and ends with me coming back, it makes perfect sense, but, 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 <laughs> but you see, I don't really feel that way about it. I have a largely fulfilling life, and I love Delia, she's wonderful, it's just, it's just that when people like you come around, I mean, how you are and, and where you're from, So, what is it about Enduring Heart Co-op? Well, like you noticed, it's not a co-op in the usual sense of the word. That place is like the heart of Fairfield. If people are in need, they can go there and they're guaranteed work. They can earn money or barter for goods. It serves as a cultural center. Yes, but more so it's a, it's a place where we can cultivate a collective identity, a spirituality based on the present and nearby. 
Do you have something like that in Chicago? A heart? No. <laughs> Maybe once, in the beginning. <sighs> Not anymore. Replaced by a machine. Things you find yourself saying out loud sometimes. Delia, thanks for dinner. Uh, yes, thanks for dinner, Delia. Oh god, is it really that time? What do you say, Tavis? Uh, some of the old vintage? I think we've all had enough of all of the vintages. Nice to meet you, Jace. Concrete, microtonal, broken structure, exploding scale, new music, early music, pre music. Pariah's first time adults is an ounce of Caesar's welcome. If you had investigated the occult, used to read Wire Magazine, and would do an oblique strategy, this may be the band for you. If you still read Wire Magazine and have never played your bass with a drumstick, this may not be the band for you. Pro gear, pro attitude, need not apply. Interested parties should present this flyer at the old Tarjo factory off Route 9, first grade middle door on the. Am I in the right place? Hell yeah! Get my base there. <laughs> Devin! Huh? Something seem off about that guy to you, or is that just me? Not particularly! Egris? Is that your name, or is that your band's name? Also, I haven't seen you around town before. Egris is my name. The last band I was in was called Inspector Deuce. <laughs> you wouldn't have seen me, I just moved to town. You just saw our flyer by the old come and go, eh? You know, it's pretty funny that you chose this time of year to come to Fairfield. How's that? Well, folks usually choose one of the other times of year. <laughs> or they don't choose at all. <laughs> this year's my boy Tug. I'm Devin. Tug's the uh, inquisitive type. I'm just uh, <laughs> wondering what brought you here is all. Well, maybe someday I'll tell you, Tug. <laughs> Just kidding around. <laughs> you know, I actually played with you guys a few years ago, back when you were still Hammer Dementias at the co-op. Uh, I was in Fat Ranker. It's funny you guys didn't pick that place to hang a flyer. I mean, seems the logical place for it. <laughs> we decided not to go through the usual channels this time. Cast a stranger net. <laughs> cool. Cool, I feel that. So, how do you guys want to get started? We should play Cornish Hen Dribbling Node. I know the tune. How's that? 
Nine Inch Names. It's my favorite tape for a while. You made like 20 of these. Yeah, I picked it up a few years back in St. Louis. Uh, you guys came through. St. Louis! At the pit slot! And a night later, at the bitch yard in Bloomington. <laughs> you actually traveled to see us two nights in a row? I had a job where I was servicing photocopiers and fax machines. Bloomington was on my route. I actually had a project where I would manipulate live samples of a malfunctioning fax machine while my bandmate wrote and faxed lyrics live from a remote location. <laughs> it, was, it was called My Prison. <laughs> it uh, got me fired from this job. Far <laughs> out! Let's give us a go then! Five, six, seven, eight. out there? I noticed it on my way into town yesterday. I had a little look around, so I'm kind of familiar with the spread. So the factory was interesting enough to pull off? Yeah, but it'll only catch a certain type of eye, I expect. I did some light squatting back in the day. Oh, good. Uh, do you...? Well, not usually, but woods and all. It's funny, I don't usually think about what I... Usually or don't usually do. So, what are we looking at here today? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Tabas, if I were to take you into my confidence about something, could I trust you to keep it to yourself? Yeah, but why would you do that? I'm not sure yet. Secret passageway? Do you remember I told you that the co-op is like Fairfield's heart? Yeah. Well, this is like the canal to its womb. Not a womb in the sense that something is born from it, but a womb is a place where the spirit or essence of something is kept. Like where a soul would reside if it took up physical space. I'm speechless. The tunnel leaves around like a maze for about two miles. Looks a little tight in there for a grown-up. We have to use this pocket light to travel through it. Looks like a little bit more than a pocket bike. I put a Vincent Black Shadow motor on it so it have enough torque for the trailer. A little unstable, but it makes the trip. It's gonna be close quarters for this part of it. Guess if things have been different, we'd all be getting around this way. on what you see here, either. I won't. No, because you're not a tool, are you? <laughs> no, I don't suppose that I am. Okay. Um, 
I too found this secret clearing once. When I was, I don't know, real young. There wasn't anything to it. It was sort of like a secret garden situation. When I first found it, I thought I felt like a presence or an energy. I went back the next day, nothing. Big letter. Mine's the opposite. I, I didn't discover this place. I was brought here. In part because I was the one chosen to tend it. Being here is among my first memories. Something that's passed down through the generations? Yeah, but not along bloodlines. And tending? What does that entail? All right, I'm going to tell you all about what this place is, but first you have to drink this. What is it? This is a part of what it's all about, Tabitha. Not too much. <laughs> People do peyote or acid at some festival and think they're going to gain some kind of secret knowledge or something. They've got it wrong. It's too much foreign psychic residue. It's about how you do it, where it's grown, what it is, where you are, who with. This puts us in sync with our environment and grounds us to what has happened and what's coming. We ingest this every day. Not nearly as much as you and I are right now, but a little bit every day. And it comes from this, this undisturbed ground, so that in that small way, we maintain a connection to the ancient. Cultivating this substance is important, and it's my most consistent task here. But it's only a small part of what I do. And by we, you mean? All of us. The whole town? Fairfield isn't just a town, Tavis. What else do you do here? Something has to be done here every day. Sometimes it's burying a certain object. Sometimes something needs to be burned or broken apart. Sometimes it involves building a structure or bringing a specific person here. It's up to me to decide. I mean, I'm feeling kind of strange, a little fucked up, but I still don't understand what's happening here. You're drifting into sync. I'm gonna do something for you. All right. Do you feel it? Yes. But... 
I'm starting to feel some forms around me. I don't know if they're real. I'm afraid. You don't have to be afraid. Listen, you're gonna be fine, okay? This is how it happens for everyone. It's a part of what this does. Now you've seen what we've all seen. Hmm. The trip. I always forget. What, that this is where people stop being polite and start being real? Yeah. You crack some joke and it turns weird on your lips and suddenly the relativist haze you've been walking around in gets blown away. Yeah, it's kind of rocking me right now. What is it that's so hard to look at? Oh. <laughs> Compromises. A little betrayals. That I used to write about things and now I just write about things. We really thought we were going to change people's hearts. The shock of the new and all that. Yeah, but we got busted. Busted by scarcity, decadence, cowardice. I just thought I was laying back in the cut a little bit, but it was worse. I became a destroyer. What happened? We got bought out. The magazine by who? Legally, I'm not allowed to say, but... What? That's not what I would have expected. Never in a million years, right? What use could they possibly have with you? Oh, they don't even know. Preventative acquisitions? It was a time when a lot of money and resources went out and evaporated in the thin air, and I didn't even know there was an offer on the table, but we needed help. <coughs> David, the editor, the other guy, he met with some people at a conference in Tokyo, and that would have been the time. I could have packed up and left, but I couldn't just go, and people are always saying, you're not going to starve of anything, but we're all starving of something. Not enough food, not enough attention, not enough... <sighs> cancer-free. It's starting to sound like a pretty dim outlook on possible futures. You don't think about the future when you're floundering. I've just been waiting for that hammer to drop. We don't really fuck with that type of ambiguity here, Tavis. We don't let people starve. Yeah, I get a sense of that. I mean, you wouldn't have to. were solid. A good thing, too. It's been a while since I've been three turns deep on unmarked roads. No service, either. Uh, I'm, I imagine you've made yourself this hard to find on purpose. Well, I used to have a shop in town. A few years ago, the city came through and shut us all down. Some old law that was on the books. Really, they wanted to get us out of there to make room for their commerce modernization project. Distillery, brewery, restaurant. A tale as old as time. We'll get started. <laughs> What would you like to examine with the help of the cards today? Uh, it's just, uh, here. Why not say it? I don't like the way it sounds. Also, I've become sort of superstitious about saying certain things out loud and the effect it might have on certain outcomes. Came all this way about this? You're more or less on the way to where I'm ultimately going. <laughs> oh. I see, of course. But I would have come anyway. I think this issue is really very important. It's significant to me. 
And Kenny says you're the best. Oh, Kenny. I told myself, if Kenny trusts him, while concentrating. I'm thinking of my concern. <laughs> the Knight of Swords, reversed. Not necessarily bad in this context, but also not particularly stable. More swords, the Five of Swords. Success, but at great cost. The trail. See how the figures in the background slink away, grievous and defeated? You may achieve your ends, but it most certainly won't be beneficial in a spiritual sense for you or anyone else involved. Your progress could potentially isolate you from other people. You could find yourself in a harsh realm. Been there, done that. <laughs> the magician. Hot dog. Mario <laughs> is made flesh and brought to the physical world, the intersection of innocence and worldliness. The way this relates to these other cards depends largely upon how you choose to use your skill and concentrate your efforts. It is clear, though, that as the coming scenarios play out, you will need to employ whatever power and skill you have at a high level, one way or another. You have two cards left. The Three of Wands. These ships in the distance are carrying word of something. They've been dispatched to spread the news. Whatever you succeed in accomplishing in these areas will not be encumbered in terms of expansion or growth. Good. Good. Final card. The sun. A powerful card, but reversed. On its own, it might just mean some failure and some dark days ahead, but... In combination with these and this, its meaning is a bit more complex, but we can speculate. Everything is dependent upon how you approach the Magician and the Three of Wands, that is, your actions in the physical world and how they spread. You could produce an outcome like the one in this one by charging forward with the reckless enthusiasm of the Knight of Swords, or you can work your way back towards the sun. Holistic pleasure is in a natural state of being where all the suits exist side by side. You're right. The message is complex, but not so opaque that it obscures which way the wind is blowing. I'm sure more now than ever that my path is on the right trajectory. Uh, can I buy this car? Uh, you can have the whole deck for five. I've got plenty. I only want this one. Okay. Why would you burn it? It's just a little add-on I do sometimes to help a reading stick. Uh, there's something else, too. Sheriff's Department! That'll be someone from the oh, county. Oh, shit! How do they know? Uh, I called them. Uh, here's for the reading and the cards. Uh, there's a little extra to help you set up shop in a new place. Uh, lots of business, etc. You're shutting me down? Why? What the fuck is wrong with you? Uh, because this is important to me. Important enough to preserve whatever psychic energy this reading has created. And I feel that further readings taking place in this space will only serve to dissipate it. Because when something's important, it's worth going through some trouble, making some trouble, to look after it. People can say what they want about me, but I'm always willing to make some waves if it means protecting something that's worthwhile. I'll show myself out. Kenny! Uh, Kenny doesn't trust me, but Kenny doesn't password protect. <laughs> Sheriff's Department, we just want to talk.
motherfucker. <laughs> hey, babe. David. Travis, how are you? What's this number? Heard you had some excitement out there. Yeah, I got your message. Why are you on your way into town? Uh, your email? That dispatch piqued my interest. Thought I'd put another set of eyes on it. I don't think that's a good idea. I was right about that place, huh? I knew it. And that mystery meeting? Man, I gotta know what went down. Wait, how come? Well, that's just it. Turned out to be a deadbeat threat. Long story, I'll tell you later. The whole town really wants. The initial fascination wears off, it turns out to be pretty typical. Oh, yeah? Sure, yeah, a little isolated by geography, a little insular, if it's a Quaker or Shaker undercurrents. The typical. Really? Uh, that's hard to believe. Yeah, I think in uh, this case, the band might actually be the story. I'm gonna try and track him down for the rest of today, but you know, odds are they've relocated. I, I don't think that's... Uh, Los Angeles. I, I don't think that's what's going on, Tavis. What do you mean? In fact, I told myself, if Tavis tries to downplay what he finds, this is definitely the place. Okay, David. All right. You're right. I'm on to something. But it's sensitive. We need to talk about it at length, and you showing up here right now out of nowhere would be impossible to explain. I'll get Phil's out. Neither one of us gets to find out what we want. Disagree. And what do you mean this is the place? Uh, I didn't clue you into the exact magnitude of your scouting trip, which turns out to have been the right move, by the way. What are you driving at? Moving day. I came up with a new ending for Online Magazine. I'm moving our headquarters out of the city and into a freaky little place with a prefab vibe. Become part of the story. Cheaper rent, free authenticity, that's production value, and at a fraction of our current operating costs. You can't do that, David. This isn't coming out of nowhere, Tadis. I had the idea back when our mole switched sides on us at the last Bitchport Festival. Been waiting for the right place to pop up ever since. David, listen to me. This is our shot to get out from under those dumbasses' thumbs. Listen to me, man. Okay. You can't do what you're talking about here. We... It won't work. Here won't work for what you have in mind. People like us, we can't know. We shouldn't know. Okay. Let me meet you outside of this. And when you hear what I have to say... Already no. on the outskirts, Dad. Uh, you notice that decrepit factory on the way in? It looks like, uh, looks... Hang on. Hello, nurse. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember me? <laughs> no scraps and gristle for you today, huh? How's a hound? <coughs> you out here alone? All the way out here, huh? You're on a tear, aren't you? A wild and out little tear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed, Booker. I, I thought your dad was hot shit, but looks like you're the one with the juice. <laughs> What's in that hole? Interesting. There a payoff at the center? A soft yes. <laughs> off limits, huh? Well, I'm guessing if it's off limits to me, it's off limits to you, too, so I won't tell if you know. It's pretty tight in there, though. You wouldn't happen to know where the keys to this thing are, would you? Well... Penitence it is, then. Lead the way, my doge. <laughs>
So you're not about what you said you were? No, I'm not. I managed to lie, even out there in the clearing, about that in the way. I thought you weren't a tool, Tavis. I never guessed that I was one. It's funny, I don't usually guess one thing or another about what I am or what I'm not. So, do you hate me for it? It's just that something beautiful and good is probably going to get ruined now. What do you think, Tavis? Should you hate somebody for that? Well, I... If that motherfucker finds a clearing, well, he'll know the last bit, won't he? He might not even be looking for it. It doesn't matter. He already wants to move his little kingdom here and turn this into some kind of oddball town weirdo cult members. He's got the exclusive on. Maybe he'll assign you to cover me, the witchy town gardener, and we can keep sleeping together. It's only a matter of time. Who knows what this place is? I came here under false pretenses. But how could I have known what? I mean, the nature of what I would find here. That's the thing about this line, is you spend so long putting everyone on, and the moment you get close to something authentic, well, you ruin it. We're just not on the same side, Tavis. Listen. No, you were just being yourself. I never should have shown an outside of that place. I just, I thought, I don't know. The what? Why did you? Who tells a two-bit party boy all their secrets anyway? I thought you were what we needed. Someone new. I mean, someone new living, being here. New energy. That would have been good for us. And now everything is in jeopardy. It's funny, but even now it's hard for me to imagine anything going wrong here. Don't make the mistake of idealizing this place, Thomas. Whatever it is about Fairfield, sometimes it gets to people. You know, I haven't been here or at the co-op for very long. Before this, I was just at the clearing, living in a trailer with Kat. We were living together. What happened to him? He's always had emotional problems. But... Last year it got worse, like a switch had flipped inside of him. And one night he drank so much, too much of what you and I had at the clearing to try to extinguish something or run away, I don't know. Most of them went somewhere and never came back. I had to pull myself back from the center of it all. I could feel myself slipping going down the same path. I don't want my coming here to be a mistake. If I can stop David from finding that place, if I can stop any of this from happening, maybe, maybe I deserve a chance in another beginning. So you're ready to switch sides? My notes. <clears throat> Flash drive. We hide everything we can at the clearing. 
disguise and seal off the main entrance. I made another way out a few years ago that nobody knows about, and then we find your friend. What if he's already found it? I'll talk to him. I'll convince him that this isn't the place. This isn't the place. Keep up with you like that. Well, we did a uh, expose on crawling pilgrimages in other countries. <laughs> crawling across the some flagellation. Even the juggalos had some version of it with a fago and a slip and slide. You know about them around here? ICP? Wicked Clown Love? The Dark Carnival? Never mind. <laughs> Did a photo essay to go along with it, sort of a, a stations of the cross lookbook type angle. I remember it was so frustrating having to affect this phony reverence for something I thought was so idiotic. But then I thought, they're doing it for their faith, I'm doing it for the story, we're both doing it, so what's the difference? So stupid back then. <sighs> This is really breathtaking, Booker. You mind if I have some of what you're sipping on there? <laughs> Thanks. Mm, this is weird tasting. <laughs> you come here often? You gotta have a place to slip away to from time to time. I remember that. Wow! You can really feel the vibrations in here. <laughs> It's funny, I, I often spend my time trying to get to the, the center or the bottom of something, but this time I'm at the actual physical center of something. Do you hear that? You know what that means? Well, neither do I. But it sure feels like something, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about this potion here. It's, it's got me feeling a little something. Is this the local Kool-Aid? <laughs> well, how would you describe it? Ayahuasca third eye type thing, huh? <laughs> and, and this this means the whole town. Yeah. Tell me, which one of these plants is it made of? I mean, I mean mainly. and it causes extremely realistic hallucinations. You, you have conversations with people and beings that aren't even there. It, mainly, it makes you temporarily lose your shit in a big way. That's in small doses. Large doses can flat out kill you. It's not very spiritual and not particularly rare either. It, it grows all over. You've been poisoning yourselves is all. Ugh! What a huge disappointment. So you're Booker the Hound when it's mask on. How do you decide when to mask off?
It's better to do it at night. It sounds like that hog. We better get a move on, Booker. Don't want to be here when whoever's on that thing shows up. <laughs> Script slipped on me, and, and I need some time to think. Let's haul ass to that switchback and let him pass us quick. Oh. How in the fucking world? Someone's delay was flipping up. You know, I think it's safe to say that you passed the Pipsy Challenge. With glowing colors! You really added a weird new feel to some of those pre existing base parts! Yeah, well, kind of had a huge head change recently. It's got me exploring the base in a new way. It's actually got me thinking about lots of things from a new angle. Feel that? I, I've been going through some weird times myself lately, and it's like sometimes the introspection can be so trifling. <laughs> you what? Thanks. <laughs> so I like to buy this place, Michael. You offer? Thanks. Speaking of pre existing base parts, Surge, right? <laughs> Why'd he leave the band? I he know. just sort of slipped. <laughs> really? Well, Why? Huh? Well, we were all over together in this compound we were running called the Tool Shed. Yeah, I heard about that spot. I decided to cut a lower profile, so we moved some of the trailers out to the woods over there. Mm -hmm. And the property manager said that we could build a space out here until this place, you know, sells and they demolish it. One day, Serge split. Seems kind of wacky, no? Well, but you've been told his behavior had been getting pretty erratic. Yeah, erratic, huh? Uh-huh, uh-huh. In his personal life, his plan is that... No, was it? No, no, we were working on this incredible thing. It was shaping up to be this incredible piece of work. And his base part was like the crux. But he got real weird about it. He wouldn't take any edits or anything. And, and... Whenever we got to this certain part of the song, he would just sort of... I it was mainly talking Serge's thing. I was just kind of riffing over it. Oh, wow. Sounds pretty great, man. you got to show me that one. I mean, without the bass part, it's really not... To... Come on, you got a recording of it? I have a shoebox recorder over there, but okay, I don't think come it's worth...
guy, someone's supposed to be my friend. But then I also found he's fucking killed my good whiskey. So then I gotta get myself presentable. So I can get more whiskey, get even more drunk, and come back here, and then, I don't know, I must have passed out or something, because then I wake up in the back of an abandoned Honda Civic <laughs> to find out I've been left for dead by the two people. It should be the least likely to do that. No, 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 I remember now, man. You, 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 you were freaking out just like you were doing, and, and, and your knuckles were all bloody. I thought you were gonna electrocute yourself or, or hurt yourself somehow, and I had to stop you and put you down somehow. No, my hands, please, no. Well, you pull me down, all right, like a dog in a dead hole. Oh. Yeah. Purvis has that land? 
Outside a house? It's the middle of nowhere. We, we can go there. Listen, we, we, we sell the gear that we don't need and then repair the old box trip and we get the fuck out of here for good. Sounds good to me. I mean, I need a better sign than it last two damn days. What do you think, then? Yeah, I'm it. What are you on about? I'm the one who got bonked on his head by his damn voice. It's just... We buried our stepmom up there, man! It's how she would have wanted to To Jane Howard. pursuing ends that he believed were in direct conflict with mine. I didn't get a chance to tell him that very recently they be had become more aligned, almost harmonious. I don't think that tragedy is a concept I'm going to let this event lead me to start believing in. <laughs> I will say that I always had a tremendous amount of respect for what I saw as Tavis's greatest gift. It may be that I was the only one who truly recognized it when he was still alive. Being someone seemingly wired to so opposite a course and, in that respect, bear some of the responsibility for what happened to him. People can say what they want about me, and they're usually right. I sent him to look into a place that I'm not going to name because I thought there was something extremely valuable, something special about it. My investigation of it ended in a sort of subterfuge, but I'm almost certain that Tavis was able to gain a deeper understanding of this place. As I go over some of the last things he said to me, I, I have to believe this is true. I think Tavis could do this because he was equipped with something that had been disabled within myself. The only thing that might have had a chance of truly interfacing with it. I think that it might be possible for me to do something to make that or something very much like it come back alive within me. And that it might be possible for anyone. But I'm not sure. 